So you want to own a Nissan Navara or maybe an overlanding vehicle and you're wondering what kind of mods have you got to do to bring it off the road and onto some tracks to be a bit more stable, uh, to be a bit more kind of up for the task of carrying some extra weight and not getting stuck and just being prepared. So you don't have to spend loads, but obviously the more and more you do, the greater your chance of success becomes if you're going to do some tougher terrain. So the last five to six years I've been working on this Navara and as I've gone, things have broken, I've replaced them with uprated bits. So I thought I'd do a little video explaining to you guys exactly what's on here, just in case any of you want to know for the future, in case you're doing it to a similar vehicle or even a Nissan Navara D40 yourself. I've had a few questions over on Instagram, so I'll answer those as well as bring you along underneath and inside to show you some of those individual bits of kit. So to start off with the questions, Chief Scout Outdoors has asked, do I have any modifications for the wheels and the tires? And the answer is yes. Um, I'm running Bighorn Maxis, um, and these are the mud tires. 764 actually so they're really good i've had extremely amazing wear on them in fact they last me for about three or four years when i'm doing heavy road use so they're a very good investment they last for a long amount of time and yeah really happy with them to get them under the wheel arches um, i had to trim them at the front so i will be putting out a little short video of how to do that in the future um, i'll try and include a clip somewhere over the top now um, but that's the only thing, so when I was on full lock I was getting a tiny bit of scrubbing on the wheel arches, so I had to do that. The other thing is I have an offset of negative 12, so that pushes the wheel out a tiny little bit. Um, a lot of people use spacers, I'm not a massive fan of spacers, so I went for the offset steel rim tyres from Tyres Direct. And in fact that's where I get the rubber from as well, so really good company if you're here in the UK. Storb Unlimited Bushcraft has asked how much was the lift kit and um, what to expect so you can expect to kind of spend about a thousand pounds on a good lift kit obviously you're getting new springs all the way around your vehicle for that um, you can go for extended shackles which do give you some lift but it's not the best they put a lot of strain on your existing springs so I've used the Ironman 2 inch lift kit heavy duty in the rear that's a 5 in 1 leaf spring setup and real good coils at the front um, obviously with their gas nitro struts as well so a really good comprehensive kit it gives me very good load control and also it's nice and soft off-road it's good on road as well and it's really helped improve the stability of the vehicle so there is that it has obviously brought it a little bit higher because I've installed a two inch body lift so my center of gravity is that tiny little bit higher so slower on the corners but for off-road and when I'm carrying more stuff, it's absolutely ideal. You can look in the range of about 500 to 1,000 pounds and upwards, of course, depending on what you get. Some vehicles have more kits available than Nissan Navara. A lot of it seems to come from Australia. Cam Little asks, how many carrots can I fit in the back? I'm not sure, actually, uh, but my weight limit would only allow me to carry about a ton and a quarter, I think. So um, yeah, a fair amount, I'd say. So 4958 Stanton has asked, what 12 volt system do I have and what do I run? At the moment I don't have a 12 volt system because I had a small fire in the back. Um, but we'll go into details about that in another video when I am restoring or making a new back for the truck. So before the fire I actually had full Renergy system which very happy with, really good kit. I had a 50 amp split charger there for the solar and to go off of the alternator whilst driving. I had an 110 amp hour calcium battery. It's a deep cycle leisure one and that's from Hankook, and really, really good bit of kit. Obviously, you only get about 55 amp hours of use from that battery uh, because of it being lead acid. So, not as efficient as lithium, which is something I want to do a little video on in the future, because I'm probably gonna get myself something. And I know Swin um, has asked for a video or some little chats about leisure battery setups, especially lithium. So I'll try and get that booked in the diary. But on top of that, I had an inverter, I had a 12 volt socket, um, and that was basically it. Some USB ports and a fuse board, ground board and stuff like that. So really helpful system. And I will definitely do a video as I start to build my new system when I'm restoring the back. And Into the Forest Ryan has asked if I had no issues with money, what would be the two mods that I'd get done? And it would probably be a front locker on the front differential, uh, just to claw me out of those tough to get bits. I've already replaced the rear differential, not with the locker, but with a pinion drive kind of um, 
limit slip differential so you can use that like a locker if you apply a tiny bit of handbrake but the other mod would probably be an alu cab but they don't make one for this so i'm probably gonna have to do that <laughs> so if i go through most of the mods that i've done on the navara my first ones were probably the headlights they were really really bad so i upgraded them through a company called em tuning and they have made the old OEM headlights into new HID ones. So they install Morimoto lenses and all the bits and bobs and completely install those. You send the lights away, they do all their magic, you get them back and you can just plug and play into your already existing loom. You have to do a few bits of wiring, which I've redone and I've tidied everything up now. As well as that, I've upgraded the LEDs on the bull bar. So that had indicators and side lights. I've changed those all to LED ones and installed my factory fog lights into those mounts so it all works really well and obviously the bull bar itself that's a modification that was from LR Challenger I have a lot of questions about that but it's basically an arb bar uh, it's a winch bumper and I've just wrapped aligned it myself so gave it a good scrub down when I did the underbody got it sandblasted and then wrapped aligned it so really really handy bit of kit and it obviously gives loads of mounting opportunities for things like the CV antenna as well which is another modification not many people over here in the UK do use them but when you're on tracks it's very very handy so excited to give that a try it's all been done with the SWR meter so everything should work perfectly but it's just few and far between when you find someone using them so if you do use CB uh, let me know what channel you regularly go on and when I'm coasting around I'll definitely tune in so going under the bonnet Probably the most important mods that I could say for a Nissan Navara is a Provent catch can, and that's the same for any diesel vehicle. Um, the crankcase breather puts a lot of air into your turbo, but it's got oil in suspension in there, so that ends up in your intercooler. When I got the car, the intercooler was about half full with oil, so I completely drained that out, rinsed it out and cleaned it, installed a Provent catch can, and it's been crystal clear ever since. So yeah, really good modification, but just remember to drain that filter out and keep it regularly serviced i guess some other big additions under the bonnet were the use of silicon hoses um, they've completely changed the game because the rubber can swell quite a lot and it also gets quite brittle so silicon homemade performance hoses are really good there's quite a few options different companies that make them i got the air pipe down to from the air box to the turbo all done i've got a forefront industries hard pipe um, which completely reduces the swell when you're boosting so much better system much better setup and I think it's one of the probably most important mods on the Navara that boost pipe when that's rubber it really does swell quite a lot so you're losing a hell of a lot of performance just from that swell so converting it to a hot pipe um, a hard pipe sorry from forefront industries has really helped obviously that's an Australian company and I'm sure there might be some people over here in the UK like Superfuse fabrication who might be able to help you with that um, another nice little thing is just gas struts on the bonnet it's really helpful so so going under the car obviously we've got a two inch Ironman suspension kit and because of that um, the geometry of the upper control arms had all changed so I went for PSR adjustable upper control arms they're really good and have completely changed the angle of the ball joint which is really good so they're sitting a lot more level now and the geometry and tracking is beautiful and alignment obviously it's a it's all one big piece of a puzzle all of the front end so when you change one thing a lot of the geometry changes so that's all back to square with the adjustable control arms and all of these pieces have been installed with polyurethane bushes now I'm at two minds about these things so let me know your opinions down in the comments but I'm not sure if they squeak more or squeak less I know they definitely last longer but I'm not sure if that's really you know yes it's nice not to have to change them but is it nice to have it kind of squeaking all the time so yes yeah, one of those things lithium grease definitely does seem to help so there is a sprayable version from WD-40 that I try to apply to everything and obviously regular maintenance with your grease nipples as well upper control arms are from PSR performance suspension racing again over in Brisbane Australia so a lot of this car comes from down under which is very funny but again they are the land where a lot of these things are pioneered and developed so really well engineered and um, really well thought out bits of kit and I can't recommend them more the only thing is obviously there's a little bit of a sting on import tax but we're starting to see some more companies in the UK stock pieces for the Nissan Navara because it's becoming that kind of platform 
that is now a bit more in people's price range as it comes down in the years. Um, it's a much older vehicle now, obviously 2007 she is. So yeah, it's nice to see things coming on the market and a little bit more innovation from companies as well. Underneath, I've obviously got a steel sump guard. That's probably one of the most important bits of kit and something I want to continue down the vehicle, which is underbody protection, especially if I'm going to be taking it on some more harder terrain or rocky substrates as well. You don't want those bits flicking up. I've actually upgraded the UJs as well on the prop shafts. The front I still need to do. But there's a big thing actually that I want to mention with prop shaft universal joints. There seems to be a whole different range of quality. So things like Toyo, um, Koyo, uh, other ones obviously, um, and then things like Spicer. So I've gone through so many Toyo UJs, universal joints. They're nice and cheap and they do go in well and they last a fair amount of time but honestly compared to something like a spicy universal joint they're just night and day i will never go back to a toyo universal joint i mean they'd last me like three to four months which is shocking to be honest um, these spicer ones are still as tight as the day i've put them in and they have just completely changed that rear prop shaft it's a nice tight unit you give it a good grease up with the grease nipples every now and again and you know you're ready to go. So yeah, really do invest some good money in universal joints because you can easily spend two, three hundred pound keep replacing them and a really good one will only cost you about 80 and last you four or five times the amount of time, probably 10 times. It probably outlasts the prop shop now as long as I keep it well maintained. And probably one of the last little bits to mention is obviously where the prop shaft goes into, the differential. These Nissan Navaras run on a Dana 44 axle. So the middle of it is a limited slip diff with spider gears and the pinion, and it has clutch plates on those spider gears. So after 100,000 miles or a lot of use on the rear diff, those clutch plates will start to wear, and I've actually had a set crack. Due to that, we rebuilt the axle, which will be coming in a video very soon, but then those clutch plates, those ones were used for multiple different axles, so they had a lot of wear and they eventually started to knock and give a very bad knocking symptom in the back of the differential, especially on takeoff, because that pinion gear was having a little bit of extra slip and a little bit of extra movement. Um, there was just a little bit of leeway between those clutch plates. So I've opted now and it is installed already. And again, another video will be coming out of that of a Speedmaster 79 pinion drive limited slip diff. So what that is, is it has one big pinion gear and around it has six helical pinions. Um, so it's no more the spider gear setup. It's absolutely amazing limited slip differential, very strong. And if, like I said, you apply a tiny little bit of handbrake just to give a bit of resistance on those rotors, you get the effect of a locker. Suddenly both wheels turn with the axle and it becomes exactly like a fixed axle or locked axle. Obviously um, a limited slip diff, kind of in and out between whether they're good for off-road because as soon as one wheel's off the ground and not in anything, that's the one that's going to be spinning. The one that's stuck won't move, which isn't very helpful. So that's where lockers really do come in. But yeah, the Speedmaster 79 pinion drive differential has been fantastic. Really quiet and yeah, very, very good. A little bit complicated to fit, but like I said, there'll be a video of that coming out soon. Um, and I guess the last things I could say about modifications and to kind of wrap this up at the rear end is really the exhaust, the Vortex exhaust. It's a three inch kit. I've absolutely loved it. Although the box has developed a tiny little rattle. So they did send me out another unit that I'm going to swap that out for. So I think that was just a bit of misfortune. And you're probably thinking, well, there's a lot there. There's a lot that you've done. And of course, I haven't even mentioned half of the things I've done. I've painted it with Raptor. I've put on additional um, reverse lights, uh, loads of things. <laughs> so there's many, many options that you can do to personalize your vehicle. But I think I've gone through really the most important ones, which are suspension, lighting, power, and things like the universal joints, little things that might let you down on a trip, um, getting some underbody protection. And hopefully this video just leads you to get a bit of inspiration when you're building a vehicle like this. Hopefully some of the bits that I've showed you through the B-roll will give you a bit of an idea of what they are. And yeah, things like the Provent, the lighting, the prop shaft, the universal joints. So I hope that gives you guys a bit of an insight as to what I've done with this Nissan Navara D40 to get it 
kind of overland ready. We're never quite there, they're always a project truck. But it's definitely an exciting thing to build one of these. And you don't have to go all out as well. Like I said, there's multiple options. And of course, there's so many more modifications I've done to this that I haven't mentioned, like the rooftop tent, the canopy, they're all kind of ancillary things, the paintwork. And that just ticks off a little box for me personally. They're little things that I wanted to do to personalize the vehicle. And I think that's one of the most fun things about doing a vehicle build like this. You get to put your mark on it. You get to look at everyone's rigs and draw inspiration and find really what works best for you. So if you do take a Nissan Navara on or a overlanding pickup or a project vehicle or a van build, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm on Instagram, always happy to help. And hopefully this video will give you a bit of what to expect if you do want to do this yourself. There's loads of videos in my Navara playlist of me doing these exact jobs and like I said, some will be coming out of doing things like the axle. I was never a mechanic, I'm still not, but I'm definitely learning my bits. And Tom, who has been an incredible help, has yeah really been an invaluable asset to that whole journey. So big thanks to him, a big shout out to him as well. And yeah, if there's any other things that I've missed in this video that you want to see in a bit more detail, like the catch can or bits like that, definitely let me know and I'll make sure to do a little short or a video on it. Thanks so much for watching guys. And again, good luck with your vehicle build and thanks for watching. Stay safe, see you soon.